Excuse me as I kiss the sky. Hey, true UBs, it is Sansa Ray here, and welcome to Toxic Relationship Tuesday, where I talk about relationships that were so toxic that they ended in someone dying. Today's Toxic Relationship Tuesday video is about Tiffany Jackson Pugh. This is Tiffany Pugh. She was 30 years old and originally from Atlanta, Georgia. She graduated from Clark Atlanta University. This is her husband Andre, aka DJ Awesome. He was a celebrity disc jockey, 34 years old, that was working at an adult establishment called Onyx. Those of you in Atlanta know so much about Onyx. It's one of the most popular strip clubs in the city of Atlanta. Andre, aka DJ Awesome, and Tiffany Pugh had been married for 11 years and had a two-year-old son and a seven-year-old daughter together. Andre was born in the Bronx, New York City and got his first set of turntables at age 13. He moved to Atlanta in the early 2000s and claims to have hosted numerous radio shows before starting at Onyx and Strip Club on the outskirts of the city. Tiffany was known as a good mother, very loving, very kind. She was easy to be around and very funny. During that time, she was working on ways to improve her life. However, unfortunate events took place that brought extreme sadness to Tiffany's family and friends. In the early morning of November 23rd, 2014, Andre received a phone call from an alarm company telling him that the alarm had went off in his home. Andre then told them to cut off the alarm before it woke up his children. Then Andre called 911, which is crazy to me. Let me explain why, because usually when your alarm goes off in your home, the police are coming regardless, so you don't have to call them even if you call them to shut off the alarm. Officer David Klickner arrived at the scene at 6.30 a.m. where Andre was in the middle of the street yelling, my kids are in there, she's not picking up the phone. Now I don't know if he came off as angry or distraught or what, but that's all that they say that he said. After police went inside, they found two children asleep. Also inside of the couple's Lake Haven Way home was Tiffany deceased in bed. She had been shot twice, once in the torso and once through the eye. Her left eye was swollen and oozing, said one of the detectives. Their two-year-old son was straddling her body, trying to wake her up, screaming and crying, no mommy, no please. Officer Klickner removed their son off of Tiffany's chest and then his partner, Officer Dow, checked for a pulse. Dow advised that Tiffany did not have a pulse. This breaks my heart so much because for this two-year-old, to see this happen to his mother, I'm sure he did. And then he's on top of his mom, screaming, trying to wake her up, and she shot in the eye, blood just oozing. I'm sure this traumatized her child. During questioning, Andre had told the police that he was out working at Club Onyx that night and that after that he went to his other home at Alpharetta. He also said that he was en route to another strip club on Campbellton Road in College Park. At 5.50 a.m. is when he received the call from ADT that the alarm had went off in his other home in East Point. The company told him that it was a possible break-in through the dining room window. The couple's two children and a third child, they were babysitting, were in the home at the time. Andre told detectives he went home, entered the residence, and saw what he thought was a body in his wife's bedroom. Rather than approach it and see, Andre went to go check on the kids. Now, I don't know if I would have handled it that way, but I'm not gonna say that the way that he handled it was wrong, I would have checked first. Whose dead body could that have possibly been outside of Tiffany? She was the only adult there, so why would he just not go look and see? Once word got around that Tiffany was murdered, her Facebook was filled with all kind of condolences. On the day Tiffany Pugh was killed, Pugh posted this to his Facebook page saying, why did they take my wife, my kid's mom, why, where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong? Okay, wait, what? That lets me know that you had something to do with it. Like, if I was reading that myself, I would have assumed, what you mean, where did you go wrong? What are, what are you saying? If someone else killed your wife, the mother of your children, what do you mean, what did you do wrong? Where did you go wrong? That doesn't register right to me. Several days later, he uploaded a message to his dead wife's Facebook profile saying, I'm trying my best not to cry, but seeing you in a state where I'm not used to it is hurting me. I miss you, love you, and want you back so much. But here's the thing. 
Two weeks before Tiffany's death, she had contacted an attorney to get a consultation so she could file for a divorce. Her attorney described her as an amazing person, a wonderful mother. She was a great person trying to do something about her situation, but it was just too late. So for the attorney to be saying something like that, I'm thinking, what possibly was going on in this situation that she was so desperately trying to get out of? The home going service for Miss Tiffany Jackson Pugh was held Saturday, November 29th, 2014 at 1 p.m. at Elizabeth Baptist Church. Dr. Craig L. Oliver, the senior pastor there, was officiating. Later on, the funeral was held at Forest Lawn Memorial Gardens on Mallory Road in College Park. Andre's childhood friend Adrian Harley was a pallbearer at Tiffany Pugh's funeral. He also worked at Onyx with Andre some nights. As the murder investigation continued, there were certain things that didn't quite sit right with the authorities. Right quick, listen, after you like, share, and subscribe, smash that notification bell. And after the video, make sure you go to my community tab to interact with me and other Sansa supporters. There, you'll find fun polls, interesting discussions, prizes, and giveaways. You can also donate to Operation Help Rebuild Block 11 Magazine by going to paypal.me slash revenue digital. Also have a cash app, it's revenue DM. You can also go to yaora.com, pick out your favorite shirt, purchase it, and then send me a picture of you in it to uplift.yaora at gmail.com and I will return your money to you, okay? Let's get back to the video. Before officers arrived on the scene, Andre allegedly told a 911 operator that his wife had been murdered according to the police incident report. The operator asked him if he had gone inside the home. He said he hadn't yet gone inside, but that an alarm company had told him there had been a break-in. The question then became, how did you know that your wife was murdered? You didn't go into the home. You told 911 that you didn't go in. The police came, you outside screaming, saying she's not answering the phone. You came into the house, you supposedly saw a body there. What you're saying does not make any sense. You saw a body there, you went to go check on the kids. It just is not going right, it's not flowing right. What you're saying is a lie. Andre and his wife was near a divorce and authorities found text messages between Andre and Tiffany where he was saying he wasn't going to permit her to have custody of their children. Cell phone records showed two calls between Andre and his best friend Adrian before and after the shooting. Adrian also worked at Onyx with him. Around the time an alarm went off at the family's residence, the men's cell phones pinged and put both of them near Andre and Tiffany's home. A neighbor surveillance video shows two cars meeting on the street. In the video, one of the vehicle parks in front of their home. The video does not show anyone leaving or entering the vehicle, but it does show the car speeding away after the alarm sounds. But get this, the car that was speeding away looks just like Adrian's car. You know, Andre's best friend, he drives an Infiniti with a broken taillight. And in the video, it's the same car. Dumb criminals. I mean, if you're gonna kill and rob someone, at least drive another vehicle, not your own. I don't think that they thought this through at all. Andre Pugh, 34, was arrested Saturday, December 6, 2014, and was held on conspiracy murder and burglary charges in connection to Tiffany's death. His childhood friend, Adrian Harley, a pallbearer at Tiffany Pugh's funeral, was also arrested for allegedly pulling the trigger. Andre had hired his best friend, Adrian, to rob his wife at gunpoint and kill her. And the asshole actually did it. Fulton Magistrate Karen Woodson sent bond for both men. She did not disclose her reasons, but defense lawyers argued neither man has a violent history and the case against them is circumstantial. Previous charges against Adrian are related to a DUI case and Andre had two misdemeanor theft charges a decade ago. Woodson also required the surrendering of passports. Andre has family in England and wearing a monitoring device at a 24 hour curfew except for work as requirements for bond. Oh, so these clowns are supposedly allowed to go back to work, but just to be monitored for 24 hours and one of them can actually leave the country because they have family in England? And I'm wondering, did someone go ahead and allow this to happen? That's ridiculous. They're accused of murder, not just robbery, not, not some little petty theft. 
murder. Andre posted bond first, but I couldn't find the amount. And then two weeks later, I believe Adrian, 34, of Alpharetta, bonded out of the Fulton County Jail on a 235,000 bond. Tiffany's family set up a website to raise money for her and Andre's two-year-old and seven-year-old. It's www.gofundme.com slash Tiffany Jackson Pugh. Oh, when people found out that Andre was arrested for this murder, they were pissed. People started dragging him to filth on Facebook. Popular blogger by the name of Freddie O wrote this on his website. I've known Tiffany since our college days at Clark Atlanta University. We marched in the band together, hung out, and she even contributed a couple of stories to freddieo.com. She was one of the nicest people you could ever meet. Tiffany was full of positivity, love, passion, and fun. She was a caring mother, devoted wife, and loving friend. We were shocked when we learned of her murder. Here's the whole interesting part about this entire situation that I feel is very intriguing. Authorities also believe that Andre might be involved in the January 2014 unsolved murder of 38-year-old Fernando Williams Barnes, aka DJ Nando, who worked at Onyx and Magic City as a DJ. DJ Nando was fatally shot in his driveway on January 7, 2014 after leaving Magic City. People are saying that Andre might have murdered Barnes to get his spot at Onyx. The two DJs were known to hate each other. Nando DJ Friday night and Andre DJ Saturday night at the local gentlemen's club. Andre and Tiffany were going through a divorce and she knew about him being involved with the death of DJ Nando so that also contributed to him murdering her. Shantae Renee watched helplessly as her boyfriend DJ Nando took his last breath in the driveway of their Morrow home. She saw her boyfriend of two years on the ground near his Jeep when she crept down the stairs after hearing gunshots. She says he's not the type of guy to have any beef with anyone. Everyone thinks strip clubs are bad. I don't want people to judge him off of his job and what he did for a living. He was a normal guy outside of the strip club. He was family oriented. DJ Nando helped launch the careers of Cash Out, Rocco, Young Jeezy, Future, Migos, 2 Chains, and he had just arrived home from work at 3.30 a.m. when he was shot at close range in the right temple. His girlfriend recounted how after the assailant shot Barnes, the still unidentified man ran away leaving behind Barnes' laptop, money, and other valuables. So you know right there that it was not a robbery. It was someone killing him just to be killing him. Probably because some kind of hate. It could have been any reason. I mean, people be killing people for the weirdest reasons nowadays. I mean, petty stuff, small stuff. People think that's the answer to everything. I honestly think that Andre killed him out of jealousy and just wanted his position. The Clayton County Police and the Georgia Bureau of Investigation have made no arrest in that case, which remains under investigation to this day. On August 5th, 2018, Andre was sentenced to life in prison without parole for hiring 37-year-old Adrian Harley to go into his home on November 23rd, 2014 and shoot his own wife and mother of his children, 30-year-old Tiffany Jackson Pugh. Andre Pugh was convicted of murder, felony murder, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, conspiracy to commit murder, and possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony. During this taping, Adrian has yet to be sentenced. They were together for 11 years. They had two children together, and this man murdered her. I try to tell people all the time, you never know a person. You think you know a person. You never know them. People will be like, Oh, date them for two or three years before you get married. Or, oh, wait a year before you have sex. Or wait till you get married before you have sex. You never know. Ba, ba, ba. Stop. You can do everything the right way. First come love, then come marriage, then come the baby in the baby carriage, and things still go crazy, okay? If you like this video, make sure you give it a big thumbs up, okay? Tune in next Tuesday for my next Toxic Relationship Tuesday, okay? Have vision and stay focused. Namaste.